myself Rudra Mol R, Assistant Professor, Unit of Anesthesia and OT Technology and Apoya School of Allied Health Sciences. Here we will be discussing on the topic Suction Equipments. Specific Learning Objective Upon completion of the section, the student should be able to describe the suction equipment and its general principles, be able to apply the application and the technique of suctioning in the operation theater after the anesthesia, list out various health hazards and complications associated with the suctioning. Moving to the introduction, suction apparatus is vital to safe medical practice in anesthesia, resuscitation and intensive care. It is used to clear mucus, saliva, blood and debris from the pharynx, trachea and main bronchi. Suction apparatus requires an energy source that generates a vacuum. Suctioning is performed when the patient is unable to effectively move secretions from the respiratory tract. This may occur with excessive production of secretions or ineffective clearance which lead to the accumulation of secretions in the upper and lower respiratory tract. General principles, suction is used to clear secretions, vomit, blood or debris from the oropharynx and upper airway. Naso or orographic tubes is used to aspirate gastric contents and decompress the stomach. Also used to scavenge anesthetic waste gases and surgical plume. A pump is used to create the vacuum. High efficiency, high pressure system is used for the removal of vomit and secretions from the airway. Moving to the principle of the section apparatus, portable section machine generate negative pressure which is channeled through a special type of plastic connecting tube called single use catheter. The negative pressure creates a vacuum effect that pulls any blood, mucus or similar secretion out of the throat. A suction mechanism is a device or system that uses a principle of negative pressure to create a vacuum. Next is the components of the suction devices. It is a power source and hence a power that distinguishes the variety of suction apparatus available, conveying the efficiency and portability features of each model. The other components used in the assembly of a medical suction devices are common to all type of equipment. Thus, the basic components of the suction include a pump, suction controller, collection vessel, transfer tubing, suction nozzle or catheter. This is a picture showing the components of the suction apparatus. Suction apparatus, at all time an efficient suction must be available either from a central pipeline installation or from a mobile electric machine. The apparatus should be plunked in and tested for leaks before starting the work so that it is ready for instant use. Checking and keeping suction unit with appropriate size, suction catheters is one of the important duties of anesthesia technologist. Next is, you have to check whether the motor is working, whether it sucks the water in full volume with full power. Now after occluding the suction tube, check the pressure gauge whether the negative pressure increases smoothly. If adequate power of section is noticed, it has to be corrected by checking the washers of the bottles, connections and other attachment for any leak and, the, and de defects rectified. If the defect in the section apparatus cannot be rectified, inform the anesthetist and send it for servicing. In the meanwhile, bring an another standby section for use till the repaired section is received. Moving to the section tubes. Commonly, the suction apparatus is provided with a length of, length of suction tube 1.5 to 2 meters length. Generally, this tube is not sterile, but for oropharyngeal suction and endotracheal suction, the sterile catheter is fixed to the suction tube. Usually, the anesthetic technician will be holding the suction tube which is unsterile. The anesthetist will fix the sterile catheter with gloved hand without touching the unsterile tube. So this is a picture showing the suction tubes. He or she will apply the suction by holding the sterile catheter. Separate catheters are used for oropharyngeal and endotracheal suction. When the suction is needed for surgical procedure, a sterile suction tube available in ethylene oxide sterilized pack. The other end is connected to the suction tube of suction catheter. 
Next component is suction catheters. Suction catheters are long flexible tubes that are used to remove secretions, fluids from the mouth and the airways. Removal of these fluids is important to ensure the lungs remain clear and patient is able to breathe properly. Disposable suction catheters are available in all sizes with color coding for different sizes. Most of them will have a whistle tip for efficient suctioning of thick whiskered secretions. Sometimes may be provided with thumb control port at the proximal end. The ports may be occluded with thumb partially or completely to adjust the force of suction for precise and accurate suctioning. Plain catheters without thumb port are also available. So this is a picture showing the section catheters. Next is the care to be taken during the suctioning. Anesthesia technologist is responsible for providing the necessary help while the anesthetist is applying suction. During anesthesia, reversing the patient from anesthesia or in recovery room, there may be need for suctioning. Perfect asepsis is necessary as infection could be easily introduced into the lungs by contaminated catheters. Two different type suction catheters are kept ready, one for applying suction in the oral cavity and the other for tracheal suction if needed. Catheters used for suctioning oral cavity should never be used for endotracheal suctioning. What and all are the steps that, has, that are taken during the endotracheal suctioning? Oxygenate the patient with 100% of oxygen before suctioning. Perfect aseptic precaution is followed. The diameter of the catheter should never be larger than one third of the diameter of the endotracheal tube. If larger catheters are used, then alveolar air may be sucked and it will cause alveolar collapse and hypoxia. The catheters pass to the endotracheal tube carefully and gently to reach the secretions and sucked out. Every time the section catheters must be flushed with sterile water. At any one time, section is applied for less than 10 seconds. Longer duration of suction will suck out alveolar air and causes collapse of the lung. Suctioning technique. Suctioning can help maintain and establish the gas exchange, adequate oxygenation and alveolar ventilation. Suctioning can be performed through an endotracheal tube, a tracheostomy tube, the mouth or the nose. Nasal section, suctioning in the nose, oral section, suctioning the mouth, nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal suction, suctioning the throat. Correct method of suctioning, the mouth should be opened using the crossed or scissors finger technique. Insert the suction tip. The rigid tip catheter must be inserted following the pharyngeal curvature with the suction off. Usually there is a control hole on the tip. If not, you will need to crimp the suction horse to initiate suctioning. So here is a video that shows the correct method of suctioning through the endotracheal tube. Endotracheal tube closed suctioning. Suction the patient's endotracheal tube only as clinically indicated and not as a routine fixed schedule treatment. Now apply the suction. Completely withdraw catheter into the sleeve. Ensure that the suction catheters is aligned with the saline flesh port and then rinse the catheter and suction tubing. Next is hazards associated with suctioning. Suctioning can stimulate the vagal nerve, predeposing the patient to bradycardia and hypoxia. Hypoxia can be preferred from occlusion, interruption of oxygen supply and prolonged suctioning. Mucosal trauma, physical injuries and bleeding can result from blunt or penetrating trauma. These are the hazards associated with suctioning. They are hypoxia or hypoxemia, tracheal and bronchial mucosal trauma, cardiac or respiratory arrest, pulmonary hemorrhage or bleeding, pulmonary atelectasis, bronchoconstriction or bronchospasm, hypotension or hypertension, elevated intracranial pressure, interruption of mechanical ventilation. 
Moving to the summary, a suction device is an essential piece of equipment needed for the care of anesthetized or critically ill patients. Medical section as a physical process bringing about the aspiration and displacement of fluids and solids by a vacuum from the patient's airway device or clinical environment. Patients on mechanical ventilation and intubated patients are at risk of increased secretion as they are sedated, supine and have mechanical adjuncts that prevent spontaneous clearance of secretions. Suctioning can help maintain and establish the gas exchange, adequate oxygenation and alveolar ventilation. These are the references. Thank you.